Welcome to video 157 in series 3, and now I'll fill in the NPC state struct script. OK, open up the NPC state struct script, and fill in the following. Private read only NPC state pattern NPC, private float inform rate is equal to 0.5f, private float next inform, private collider and array colliders, private collider and array friendly colliders, public NPC state underscore struck, brackets NPC state pattern NPC state pattern, and then NPC is equal to NPC state pattern. OK, so let's jump to the NPC state pattern script and put that in there. And I'll just save that. So that is struct state is equal to new NPC state struct. Pass in this, so this script. OK, I will use the update state to say inform nearby allies that I have been hurt. So that is the new method that I need to write, of course. And of these required methods, I will also use the toAlertState method. So in this one, I will say npc.currentState is equal to npc.alertState. All right, I'll start by writing the uh, smallest method, and that is void set myself to alert. Inside of that, npc.pursueTarget is equal to npc.myAttacker. So my attacker is going to be supplied uh, by uh, the attack script on guns and uh, also on uh, the melee weapon and, uh, well, yeah, those two. So the two that a player can use or another NPC can use to strike this NPC with, now those will actually tell uh, a, the NPC who is actually the attacker. And so what will that do? So then npc.location of interest is equal to npc.myattacker.position. So uh, the NPC, uh, you'll see further, if, there, if the uh, one who is shooting at it is not too far away, they'll say, OK, that area where the uh, my attacker is, I should go there and have a look at that location. So if state is equal to state then npc.capturedState is equal to npc.investigateHarmState. So they need to find out who is attacking them. So they're not so stupid. Well, they are pretty stupid. OK, so never mind. Cancel that. The uh, NPCs are dumb. But uh, in this case, at, at a certain range, they will go and investigate what exactly was it that was attacking them. OK. OK, next, above that, I will write Void alert nearby allies for each collider ally in friendly colliders. If ally dot transform dot root dot get component NPC state pattern is not equal to null, then NPC state pattern ally pattern is equal to ally dot transform dot root dot get component NPC state pattern. You've seen this already. This is in the alert script. It's a uh, very similar, a bit uh, slightly different. Now, if ally pattern dot current state is equal to ally pattern dot patrol state, ally pattern dot pursue target is equal to npc dot my attacker. Ally pattern dot location of interest is equal to npc dot my attacker dot position. Ally pattern dot current state is equal to ally pattern dot investigate harm state. Ally pattern dot npc master dot call event npc walk anim. Okay, so we haven't written the method yet that uh, carries out the overlap sphere to capture all the uh, allies, but what you can see, this method is saying to the ally that if this ally is validly in range, then they'll be told that of this uh, the character's attacker, and they'll be told of the position to go to and be told to go into the investigate harm state, which we've still yet to write. OK, now I'll write the uh, last method, the one with the really long name, and that is right here. So void inform nearby allies that I have been hurt. If time.time .time is greater than next inform, next inform is equal to time.time time 
plus inform rate. I don't want it to be uh, running all the time. It is a little bit expensive, of course, uh, carrying out an overlap sphere. So I don't want the overlap sphere to be, you know, running every 0.1 seconds or whatever the check rate is. Oh, uh, well, yeah, whatever the NPC's clock is anyway in the uh, state pattern script. So if NPC.myAttacker is not equal to null, friendly colliders is equal to physics.overlapsphere starting from npc.transform.position, comma, npc.sidetrange, comma, npc.myfriendlylayers. Now, if is attacker close, so that's uh, another method here that I've copied in. I should have probably put that in first and shown you how it works. Sorry about that. So if is attacker close, then alert nearby allies and set myself to alert. Now let's have a look at this method. So this is another method. I'm sorry about that. I copied in two at the same time. I should have had here separately. Bool is attacker close. If vector three dot distance starting from npc dot transform dot position comma npc dot my attacker dot position is less than or equal to npc dot site range times two. That's rather arbitrary. All I'm saying here is if my attacker is close enough such that so the you know the npc has a side range and i'm saying that if the attacker is within double of the site range then return true and then alert nearby allies that i suspect that there's an attacker over there somewhere well i actually the exact position is given but so if the attacker, so let's say it's an attacker shooting from very far away, so the player, then the NPC has no idea where it's from. And so it'll return false, and the NPC will just do whatever it was doing, uh, which is probably going into the struck state, and then just wandering around or going through waypoints after that. Uh, but if the attacker is within range, it will return true, and that means the attacker is close, and the nearby allies will be alerted, and also this particular attacked NPC will be set into the alert state and will start walking towards uh, where they need to go and investigate as well. Okay, uh, so that should be uh, pretty good. Well, it doesn't actually set them into the alert state. Actually, this method's name is not quite right. It should actually be uh, set myself to investigate. So let me just change that. So let me copy that, bring it up there into the uh, inform nearby allies that I have been hurt. So that's my mistake there. Okay, so that looks uh, a lot better. And actually, just looking at it, I'm just wondering if I do, I actually even use the to alert state. So let's have a look. Uh, no, so I don't actually use that. So that was actually, again, that was actually a nonsensical bit of line of code. So at some point of time, I must have been using the alert state instead of the investigate harm. So in fact, uh, if we didn't have this code here, I'll just comment it out. Then if we didn't have that, it makes no difference because the... Um, NPC will be moved into the investigate harm state. And I should also remind you that the NPC does not stay in the struct state indefinitely. Uh, if you recall, we have in the NPC state pattern script a recover. So the activate struct state. So that's how we went into it. So it's due to this. And we have a recover from struct state as well. And uh, and the recover from struct state will result the NPC going back into whatever state they were in before, unless they move into the investigate harm state. Okay, and the activate struct state, that is subscribed to the event NPC deduct health. So when the NPC loses health, it will cause it'll call the method it will call the method activate struct state so then the npc goes into the struct state and then eventually uh, they'll recover from that struct state okay so that is it for this script let's go to unity just double check that there are no obvious errors and of course we can't see it uh, 
work at the moment. Our golem has no um, possibility of being hurt or going into the struck state. So it's going to be a while yet uh, before we get to see that in action. So anyway, so the best thing to do is to just keep on moving forwards.